Hello, gentle viewers. This is Ev Guardian welcoming you back to Out of the Park Baseball 22. 23, check that. Although it feels like 2022 sometimes because I guess it is. Anyway, <laughs> with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, and we won the World Series again. I, I'm still not sure how we did it. And we did it in fairly dominant fashion, too. Um, but I'm here for it. Obviously, I'm not sad that we won the World Series. That's the farthest thing from my mind. <clears throat> but it's going to be a year of transition. Um, at a bare minimum, we're moving on from our, our long-beloved catcher, Andre Sevilla. Uh, Mr. Avila has given us many years of, of fantastic service, but he is no longer a worthwhile piece to this club. Certainly not at the price he's asking for. Um, is he a Hall of Famer? I think maybe. I think he'll definitely get some votes, but I don't think he's going to get in on the first ballot or anything like that. Um, he does have some hardware, which will help. Namely, 10 All-Star games is going to matter a lot, and 7 Silver Sluggers. I think if he had somehow won an MVP, which he came very close in 2039 and 2040, and 2043, and 2045... I think one MVP puts him over the top, in my opinion. I think one MVP puts him over the top, and we're talking about um, one of the best uh, catchers in recent memory. However, unless he goes on for like another two to three seasons, and somehow manages to find an everyday job where he's hitting like he did last season... Maybe, but I'm also would be concerned as a new owner of how his power has trended in the wrong direction. Uh, he's lost nearly 100 point slugging average or slugging percentage, whatever you'd prefer, over the course of the past few years. He's gone from a 466 to a 382. That's obviously a deep concern for anybody who chooses to sign him. So that is that. Um, we're also moving on, probably, from Tommy McDonald. That is much less of a sure thing, though. Um, I am not at all against bringing him back for one more season, or even two more seasons. I just don't want to have to pay him a lot of money. And even this, without two team options, seems like quite a bit of money, right? Like, I need this team option in year in 2052. That's non-negotiable. If I don't get it, I'm not going to do it. Flat out, I'm not going to do it. Uh, the question is, would I want him back even for one year at 19 million? Well, if we go by 8 million per war, he was worth uh, about 18 million last year, thereabouts. Even though he only played half a season. <clears throat> and while, yes, he's definitely losing velocity on his fastball, we can see that in this column here. He still throws strikes, and he still has great movement. So even if he's not the strikeout machine he used to be, he's still a productive pitcher. So the only question would become, A, do we think this injury is going to heal well? It's six or seven months, right? So, which means he would be back in... Let me do some math here. Uh, November, December, January, February, March, April. In a perfect scenario, he'd be ready for opening day. Or he'd come back about the All-Star break. I wonder if he would do two team options in that case. I'd love for him to retire a pirate. Let's give you a nice buyout. <clears throat> I'm going to increase your bonus if you hit that 160 innings mark. 
And let's see if he takes this. He would accept this deal. And I am fine with this. I'm no hesitation, submit offer, done. If he takes that deal, I will be very, very happy. Um, it saves a significant presence in the in the statue, and I'm pretty happy about that. Alcantara, he only wants 2.6 million to come back. He is fragile, but he's still a good pitcher. And 2.6 million is, is basically nothing. If I don't bring back Alcantara, then where does that leave me pitching-wise? I've got Moya and I've got Nieves, both of whom are trending in the wrong direction. I've got Jose Brown. So if I bring, if I bring everybody back, if I bring McDonald and I bring Alcantara back, the odd man out becomes Caleb Bautista again. But Caleb Bautista didn't pitch all that well, is the thing, right? So I don't mind turning him into a reliever and getting some value out of him that way. And then we just trade Jamie Long for literally the first box of baseballs I can come up with. Um, so yes, if that's all Alcantara wants to stay a Pittsburgh Pirate, I see no reason not to give it to him. Um, yes, he is fragile. Definitely a concern. And he is going to only age, you know, he's only going to get older. But, he's a reliable hand. And we could turn him into a reliever if we need to. So, to that end, I just don't want to promise you a role in the starting rotation. If that works for you, that works for me. Done. So, it really stabilizes our rotation a bit. Um, would I like an upgrade? Probably. But I think the real issue is going to be, can we upgrade at second base? Because, and, you know, let's be fair here, he's had less than 400 at-bats as a Major League Baseball player. He's been awful in the big leagues. <clears throat> There's really nothing about him that gives me some level of confidence other than his pop. If he hits 270, he's a valuable player. The problem is, I don't think he's going to hit 270. And so, replacing Nargiso makes a ton of sense. So the question becomes, who replaces him? And is the answer Jonathan Webb? Now, Jonathan Webb had a really rough time in AAA. So I don't necessarily want to say, oh, Jonathan Webb, you're the greatest. Please join us. But, I mean, the alternative is I don't have another second baseman that I trust other than maybe Webb. The last option, of course, would be trading an Otis Wolf or maybe Luis Gonzalez and seeing if we can acquire a second baseman. So, a couple things I want to talk about about the roster before we start making some decisions here. <clears throat> I wanted to thank the commenter. I think I've been dancing back and forth on this, the idea of keeping two middle infielders, but the fact is, I don't think it's useful. I think we'd be better off either carrying another bat or trying to find a more offensively inclined player to fill that goal, fill that hole. Um, we're going to need a new backup catcher. Um, I've got a couple options, though, so I'm not worried about that. I think backup catcher is going to be a promotion 
If I want offense, probably Ben Ayun, who seems a little bit more offensively inclined. If I want defense, probably Jose Herrera. But I can't really go wrong with either one of them. Uh, so I'm good with backup catcher. I'm very good with either one of them being my backup catcher. We'll figure that out. Center field... Randy Sloan is really good defensively and has a lot of pop. So I don't hate him as a player. And look, I've I've got him for a few more seasons. And I definitely don't have anybody better. Um, we could maybe platoon him since he seems to really have an issue with left-handed pitching. That's one option. Let's check his splits. <clears throat> he definitely had more power against righties, but he wasn't, he was equally bad in either case. But his defense is so good that he only has to provide some surplus value with the bat in order to be a worthwhile player. And so while I wouldn't mind an upgrade to center field, I don't know where that comes from. Joe and Grattan holding down the corners makes a lot of sense uh at least for the next season or two um cerulli and hughes platooning at dh makes a lot of sense um i think they're a really good combo as somebody pointed out daily at shortstop um we just gave him a new contract extension that we're pretty happy about Pozo, no one's bumping him from third. <clears throat> Even if last season started really, really cold, he's an incredible hitter, and he plays really good defense. Um, I still think he is a very worthwhile player. Is he a Hall of Famer? No. But he might be one day. I think he needs at least five more years at this level or better in order to truly say yes i'm going to be a hall of famer he doesn't have to be a hall of famer though in order to be a one of the better pittsburgh pirates and a worthwhile contributor to our game he's durable as shit um he's got really good doubles and homer power he hits for a pretty decent average most seasons and he gets on base at a pretty good clip I have nothing negative to say about Pozo other than his cold start to last season, which may have cost us a couple of games here and there. His nickname is Melody, which, okay. I guess I'm here for that. I don't have any strong opinions about it. Where else could we make some upgrades this offseason? The bullpen is full of really good pitchers, but there isn't that one outstanding pitcher other than Jim Gender. Now, if Mr. Gender comes back uh, and turns in another great season, I think we'll be fine. Um, I don't think I'd have him as a reliever because his, his third pitch is just that bad. But, you know, we have one really good pitcher and a lot of pitchers that are just kind of like, yeah, okay. Um... But I think second base is the big target area. Jose Nargiso got has over 100 games in the big leagues. He has exactly 100 games in the big leagues, right? You have 90. Oh my gosh, my math is terrible. No, he has 93 games in the big leagues. He's got almost 100 games in the big leagues. So, basically, two-thirds of the season. And he's been utter trash. Um, if he was, like, a top-tier defender, I might be willing to forgive it, but he's not. So, I think Nargiso just ends up being a bust, and we move on from him at a minimum. What do we do with Otis Wolf? Is the other big issue. Now, he's a terrible first baseman, but he's also a first baseman. 
Which means I don't care if he's not a gold glover. I really don't. He's got a really intriguing offensive skill set. He's really good at getting on base. And he's got enough other tools that are going to make him a very productive hitter. But he's got Cerulli issues. Namely, he can't hit left-handed pitching that well. It's not that big a difference. It's not so big a difference that I would bench him against lefties necessarily. But he's definitely much better against righties. So we're talking, does it become the, the opposite part of a platoon? Maybe. Do we give him some reps in the outfield? Like, he'd be terrible there too, but I guess being terrible at multiple positions, being terrible at one. Um, I don't know. Keeping Wolf on the Major League roster just to be a bench bat back up for his baseman seems like kind of a waste. But I don't want to trade him either. Because, as something I addressed in a comment, if Cerulli gets hurt, and you never know, right? Yes, he's considered durable, but you never know. Wolf becomes the designated hitter. And let's be clear, on our last season, as good as Cerulli was, and he was quite good, there's another level here. A very obvious other level to his game because he didn't hit for average and our scouting suggests he should be hitting for average too um, and even if I would never necessarily put him in the outfield regularly he could do that and not embarrass himself too badly so that's what's scary about Cerulli is he's got another gear we know that, right? We, it is an objective fact that he hit for a very high average in the minor leagues. He regulated 280, 230. Another 50 to 60 points of batting average and the accompanying things makes really one of the best hitters in the major leagues. So, I think this team does have another gear. I don't think anyone is playing so far above their actual talent level, except for maybe daily, that, that we need to worry about that. It is an older team in the outfield. So getting some more depth in the outfield would make sense, except I've got some pretty robust minor league presence uh, in terms of outfielders, so... If we lost an outfielder, I'd probably either call up Ray Simano or Luis Gonzalez. Luis Gonzalez has to hate me at this point, right? Like, every single time he thinks he's going to get regular playing time in the big leagues, he ends up going right back to the minors. Uh, if we look only at his major league performance, he's basically at 115 games in the majors. And all we know from those 115 games is that we don't know anything, because most of them pinch hit appearances, right? So at some point, we're going to have to do something with Luis Gonzalez. I get that. We do have one solid starting pitcher and potentially Corey McLaughlin just kind of sitting here in the minors. And also, holy fuck, 22nd round and he might make the big leagues. That is incredibly impressive, right? Now, yes, he's going to get lit up in the big leagues to a certain extent. But I'm willing to give him that chance because, again, 22nd round draft pick. Uh, this is a major coup by our scouting director. Even if he never turns out to be a good pitcher, the fact is he is one injury away from the big leagues. And that's something that many pitchers can't say. So, second base, I'd be willing to spend some significant resources in order to help us out there. So that's cool. If Alcantara and McDonald recover from their injuries and are anything like they were in the past, phenomenal. I think we'll be a very, very solid team. Uh, and I think we might even make the playoffs again. I'm not going to say we're going to win the World Series again, 
that was just the purest luck that ever lucked but um i do want to make some 40 man moves just so we can clear some space uh jimmy donahue uh you may be waved I guess nobody else really needs to be taken off the 40 man. I mean, Chris Lewis, maybe. Um, Lewis has had several opportunities in the big leagues. He's never really impressed me all that much. I think I'm going to actually try to trade him, though. I think someone else is going to look at him, be intrigued by his power, and want to give me something for them. Uh, only prospects, though. I don't even want like anyone that makes a salary. I just I want him off the, the roster. Prospect package. Okay. Well, you know what? I will accept the the waving of Chris Lewis. I don't think he serves a purpose anymore. Josh Wass, and that's what I was thinking of the other day. Yeah. Someone you brought up the point of having a great super utility guy. Um, I don't know if Watson is that guy, but I think he's good enough that he could be. And he's also a captain, right? So maybe Watson replacing our other two middle infielders makes sense. Uh, cause definitely the better hit, the best hitter of the three of them as well. So that may be something we think about here in the near future. Is there anyone want to add to the 40 man so we don't lose him? And I think the answer is no. Like, none of, my, none of my people that are Rule 5 eligible are so impressive that I feel obligated to add them. Um, I mean, maybe Godinez. He has a... No. All he does is strike people out. That's his only tool. What a weird guy. How are you 6'4", but don't even throw 89 miles an hour? What? Yeah, man, I I don't know what to make of him, and I'm not going to waste a 40-man roster spot in him because I definitely don't see him as a starter. When he's got one pitch, a screwball, admittedly a pretty great pitch, and nothing else. That seems like a bad risk in the big league. So I can... If people want to take him in the Rule 5, I'm not going to obstruct him from his destiny, perhaps. So my friends, uh, with all that sorted, let us go ahead and advance forwards. Uh, San Diego, you are welcome to Mr. Jimmy Donahue. I will not even fight you. Oh, I do need a new pitching coach at double A. So kindly, how about Queso Stathopoulos. That sounds like an incredible decision. I love it. Not just because that name is amazing, although that name is amazing. Um, yeah. Um, I didn't realize Jimmy Donahue was like the biggest of fan favorites, and I'm not saying he's a terrible player. But, yeah. I'm, I'm just going to let him go. Oh, literally he already played for San Diego? Did I literally trade a player and then lose him? I, I did. That was pretty silly of me. But I'm fine with that. I should have checked to see his value as a reliever. Okay, we got McDonald back. Very fine news. Gilbert comes back, Hops comes back, Brown and Turhar come back, got some minor league extensions, very nice, very, very nice indeed. Alcantara stays, and we have a trade deal. Eric Matherly isn't a bad pitcher. He's even a borderline starter. 
but he's also 37 years old, and Andrew Outlaw is, quite frankly, an amazing name. Yeah, I don't, I don't really see the fuss. Oh, Greg Merrill, re Chris Merrill. Who's Chris Merrill? Why do I care about him? Did you used to play for me? Oh, I drafted him. Okay. I literally don't remember him at all, though. Uh, and Juan Mendez was good for the year I had him. And what did I do to Chris Mendez? Did I trade him? Or... Oh, I just literally let him go because he wanted a ridiculous salary. Well, that's fine. It's not ridiculous salary, but it's, it's, it's fine. And Nieves comes back. Moya comes back. I, I'm feeling the love right now. Okay, I've still got 18 million to play with in free agency and 22 million in extensions, so I'm pretty happy about that. Um. Uh, 10 million is too much. It's way, way too much. Uh, Chris Lewis did clear waivers, so you can enjoy your time in the minors. No, Hops, please, no. Don't go see Vishnan hit me hard. That sounds like a terrible idea. Look at the name. Oh, my God. A gold glove for Clint Daly. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Well done, Clint. You're no Clint Barton, but that's okay. I don't need someone to be able to shoot people with a bow and arrow. Oh, uh, I don't need a first baseman, but thanks for playing. No, I, I don't want Bobby Schultz. I, I see no value in him right now. I don't know why my GM is like, oh my gosh, Bobby Schultz. No. I'm a little annoyed we didn't get any silver sluggers. Like, come on. Bill Garay hit 39 homers. How is that not silver slugger worthy, I ask you? I demand an answer. You need 46 home runs. They'll take your 46 home runs and shove them up your butt. That's what I say to you. Holy shit, Quentin Carson. Damn, son. Okay. Now, Cy Young hasn't been announced yet. I just, quite frankly, don't see myself winning, getting a Cy Young or MVP. I mean, maybe, but I would be pretty surprised if we did. Like, I'm sure someone from Pittsburgh will place in the top three. I feel pretty confident about that, but I don't think that we were going to win either of those awards. Um, really? Rory Gratton is the only pirate who got any... Oh, no, Joe got MVP votes as well. That's respectable, I guess. Really? Oh, there's Garay. Okay. Uh, I know pitching. I didn't have anywhere near that. So good, good job, Charlie Windsor. Um, good job. Jeff Burnside is still pitching for the Phillies. Yeah, he's a really good pitcher. Um, he is almost certainly a future Hall of Famer. Uh, or close to it. But, alright, speaking of Hall of Famers, the voters better be voting for the right guy. Okay, here we go here. Um... 
I'm gonna suspend you because you won't go talking to this stupid guru. Like, what the fuck, man? You're suspended, dude. Why'd you see a guru's name was hit me hard? Why? Who does that? All right. First things first, most important thing that's gonna happen. Uh, Gunnels should be the first choice on everyone's ballot. He just should. I'll go for Abrams. Abrams is pretty solid. Looking, looking, looking. I don't see Kemp Alderman. I, I really don't. Yes, he got 2,000 hits and over 500 homers. But the fact is, he wasn't ever a good catcher. I don't know, man. Jake Doling, nope. Jo Josh Fedora, nope. 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 Tim Graber, maybe. I feel like you gotta give some pitcher a bone. Guys, how is Alex Guillen even on this list? What is it about him that makes you think a sub, a sub, uh, replaceable player deserves it? Um, Mike Hutner, yes. I'll give him some love. Gavin Lux, maybe. Billy Manzo, definite yes. Mike Marion, sure. Christian Pache, friend, I don't know what is going on with you, but it is criminal that you're not getting more than 20% of the vote. Isaac Priedis is almost 3,000 hits and he can't get elected either. Tough crowd. I love the nickname, Kevin, but I think I'm going to pass on you for right now. I might come back and add you later. Gross. I will vote for Sam Riddle. Again, I don't think it's going to matter. I think we're just at the point where they're just not going to vote in any pitcher or almost no pitchers, so we just kind of have to accept that. I'll vote for Kevin the Rat. Oh, I can't vote for Kevin the Rat. I'd rather have... Wait, who got kicked off my my thing? This is fine. I'm not going to sweat it. That's a good list. Okay, free agency. We are going to be in the market for virtually any second basin that might be available. Who can give us a one-year stopgap? Maybe two. To, uh, to see what we can accomplish there. Okay, all players, please. Wait a minute, our old friend Josh Lynch is on the market? Uh, nope. I thought about it though. I definitely thought about it. You're a very talented hitter, but you're not really a second baseman, so no. You're not a very good hitter. You're okay, I guess. Wow, this is just not a great class, is it? Maybe I need to be trading for one. I mean, Josh Felder isn't terrible. 
I could see this working out potentially. He's got to be better than Narghese. Oh my god, absolutely not. Look at that freaking arm strength. No. Uh, I too am a fan of a guy named Brandon Sneeze. That is true. Alright, so let's start by having a filter. Don't even talk to me for not at least 60 defense at second base. Edgar Escobar, huh? Oh, Escobar cannot hit. Like, even a little bit. Okay. The God of Batting? What the fuck? Bro. That's hilarious, quite frankly. That's hilarious. That you think of yourself as the god of batting. Oh, that's good. That's really good. Okay, Felder has the spaghetti arm. Dembowski is merely average. Oh, you don't have any range. Oh, my boy. I was so ready to sign you, and then I saw your range, and I'm like... Nope. And now we're getting to the point where I'm basically just playing people I've already got. So, I have a bunch of money to spend. And to be honest, I don't see anybody worth spending it on. I know that's kind of weird, but... That's it's what it is. Um, Because all I cared about was defense. I've got two amazing defensive second basemen on the roster already. So, I mean, yeah. Are there any intriguing second basemen on the trade market? Uh, Jeremy Alvarado is not terrible. But I don't want him for four million. I think that's a little bit silly. I don't see him being worth that much. As a third baseman, maybe. As a second baseman, not so much. Aguilar doesn't hit that well. Andy Lenway doesn't hit that well. But is a great second baseman, at least. Yeah, I mean, none of these guys are leaping out at me. As I want them back in my roster. I go for... Oh, that's interesting. Do we bring back Jeremy Brickhouse? What are you looking for, Virginia Beach, in exchange for the brick house known as Jeremy? You want Alfaro? You can have Alfaro. But I could also give you Allen instead. So, Allen is yours. Okay, so there is our opening day second baseman. Um, old friend of the Pirates, Jeremy Brickhouse. Um, which means Nargiso is now totally expendable. I have no reason to keep him. Brickhouse is just better. And Nargiso, I've got, um... You know what? One more year in AAA won't hurt to see if he can max out some of his, his hitting talents. He could be a useful bench player, maybe. But he's definitely not going to be starting for the Pirates this season. That I can assure you of. Um, all right, my friends. Let us go ahead and simply proceed. I have no desire to spend any money in this free agent market. All right, you've all got to be activated. That's right. I'll tell you, Ma, tell you what, though. If Avila agrees to come back for $2 million or less, I will bring him back. I think he's got enough value as a pinch hitter and as a, a backup catcher, no matter how awful, that I would pay him $2 million. I think he would be worth that much. But nothing else. Uh, I would not pay him more than $2 million.
All right, let's quickly check and see what kind of deal Avila is looking for right now. I'll go ahead and clear the filter, please. 2.8 million. But he's only a pinch hitter at this point. He can't really catch it all. And he wants to be in the starting lineup. He's at best a DH at this point in his career, and I've already got a pretty good one. So I think I'll pass. Even at 2.8 million, I think he's too much money. Alas. Um... Like, if Avila comes to me and will sign for, like, a minor league deal, I would do that. But... I wonder if anybody will sign Avila... Or if he might be forced to retire if nobody signs him. Um, let's go ahead and send Brandon and, and Nargiso and Dioka to the minors for a moment, just so I have an open spot in case I decide I want to take someone in the rule five. Is there anybody special here? Besides relievers. Um, but maybe relievers too. Chris Gomez, big fat no. Uh, I don't trust him at all. Any high potential guys that maybe just need to be stashed on a roster? Tim Marina. Greg Berman. Yeah, I don't really see it. I don't really see anybody here that really does it for me. So I'm just going to go ahead and say complete the draft. Okay. The Rule 5 draft class has really gotten weak of late. I think teams are just getting a lot better with roster management. Now, I always say we're counting on an awful lot from our older players this season. Um, which is definitely not what we would normally do, but I don't really see that we have another option at this point. Did Gunnels get into the Hall of Fame? You absolute fucking communists. I hate you all. The idea that for even one second, Kemp Alderman is more valuable than Garrett Gunnels fills me with loathing and disgust. How do you go backwards on his vote percentage? Nobody here is that good. Right. All the all the all the people who did not vote for him should be summarily executed. That is what I believe. Can Avila really not even get a minor league deal? Or is he just holding out for a major league deal? Oh, 
Oh, can I adjust this stuff? I can. Uh, let's go ahead and bump up the scouting budget by another five million, please. Or maybe this would be a good year to just try to make money so my owner gets off my fucking back. Because I don't really need the money right now. Um, I will at least talk to Avila again and see if anybody has... Boy, a game, you're really tempting me here with Josh Lynch. Hmm. Do we bring Josh Lynch back? So, let's talk about what he could bring to the club. I don't hate what Sloan did, though. Ouch. Right? That's my issue, is that I don't hate what he provides to the team. I do think a healthy Josh Lynch is better, though. So let's see, what would we do with him if we don't keep him? I mean, we could play him off the bench. He, his, his package would definitely play well off the bench. I'm sorry, Lynch is too clear an upgrade. He's too clear an upgrade. I'm frankly flabbergasted that no one else has offered him a deal, but I will offer him a deal. I'll even guarantee him starting center field job. Mr. Andre Sevilla, your price is coming down. What if I offered you a minor league contract with a $2 million salary if you get promoted? No. Even 1.7 is a bit too much for me. I'm sorry, that's just the facts. Yeah, getting Josh Lynch back on this team would be a pretty big coup in a lot of ways. I'd feel a lot better about the entire rest of the team having someone who could contribute both offensively and defensively. That's cool. Come on, my friend, Josh Lynch. Excellent. Beautiful. That just makes us a better team. It just makes us better. And I'm absolutely delighted that we have him back on the roster. Um, that is the best of news. Let's go up to spring training now, and then we'll see what happens with that. Andre Sevilla, I don't think anyone's going to sign you, my dude. Which is really disappointing, obviously, because he did have such a fantastic career for us. But I just don't... I don't see it. I don't see anybody making that deal. Quick scan here. Jose Brown is getting better. That's pretty cool. Caleb Bautista is losing velocity, though. But hey, he's the reason we won the World Series, right? He was super clutch, and I'm pretty excited about that. Cerulli got a touch worse. Lynch is about the same. Joe is about the same. Who is Chris Mata? Oh, you're just kind of a dude. I would like to start spring training, please. Man, someone's gonna get a Vila and they're gonna be floored by how good he is. But, 
Okay, I definitely want to give Webb some reps in the majors. I think that's fair. Herrera and Benayoun both get to go. And I think Corey McLaughlin. I think I want him to get some reps in spring training as well. Go ahead and set my staff. We're going to go for a six-man rotation for spring training purposes. Um, we're then going to go with letting Mr. Rutherford set things the way he likes. Um, I'm going to overrule you, Mr. Rutherford. I definitely want Jim Hughes uh, batting regularly at DH during spring training. I want to get him those reps. Um, so he can get used to his new job. Okie dokie. Let us train in the springly fashion. Oh my god, okay. Jim Gender is really becoming an issue. He seems very fragile. I mean, I'll pitch a dude till his arms fall off, but yeah. I am not filled with joy at his constant injuries. Um, I will not stand in your way, but I would like you to stay because you've been a very good hitting coach in the high minors or low minors. I'd like you to stay if you don't mind. Yeah, you pulled an abdominal muscle. That's not fun. I've done that sneezing. I can't imagine doing it during like actual athletic activities, right? That is pretty, pretty crazy. Oh, I was going to do something else. Shoot, I think I'm too late, maybe. We'll see. Uh, I was going to change the playoff structure. That was the other thing I was going to do. Uh, but I forgot. So we've got, what is it, 36 teams now? I think we definitely want to make some decisions there. Okay. Wow, you boys are not making it easy on me. As both Herrera and Benayun got better. Wolf got better. Argiso got worse. Webb got better by a little bit. Okay, so if it's not too late, I am going to change the playoff structure. So, really quickly, just as a reminder, we have six divisions of six teams each that works out to being 36 teams. So, I think we're going to increase the six team playoff. Uh, la, ba, 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 da, ba, da, ba. rules. Here we go. No. No. Is it under options? It is under options. Okay. Um. <clears throat> so, I think with six six division divisions, thirty six teams, we need a minimum of. 14 teams making the playoffs, but probably 16. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do 16 teams. And we're going to say... I want to do open season. I want there to be two more wild cards in each league. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make the wild card series a three-game series. That should hopefully mitigate some of the randomness so that... Yeah, just like that. Well, we could do like a round robin. That'd be pretty cool, but no. Um, higher seed advantage. Oh, eh, that's fine. Uh, 
You know what? I like that. I like the idea that the home team gets all the all the home games. I like that a lot. I think that makes it gives you a real incentive to win the division, right? It gives you a real incentive to want to win the division or be the very best wild card. Because uh, very best wild card will also get the same benefit of having home field uh, throughout. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to reseed. I think we're fine as we are. Yeah, let's freaking go, my friends. This is what we're going to be... This is what's going to happen for the playoffs. So, thank you for the reminder. Somebody brought it up in the comments. And I was like, that's an amazing idea. I need to do that. And then I forgot to do it. Ah, uh, whoopsie. Whoopsie doodle, in other words, is the takeaway there. I don't know why I love the phrase whoopsie doodle so much. I just do. I just got to accept that, I guess. All right. So, first things first, both Alcantara and McDonald are going to go on the IL. So that's step one of our master plan. Um, I'm going to need another starter... For at least the first few weeks of the season. And friends, do you know who that starter is going to be? What is Neil Pulsifer if I turn him back into a starter? What is he rated as? He's rated as a 27. Uh, yeah, dude. You've all of a sudden lost any ability to throw strikes. Those are kind of important. Uh, I don't know what happened to you, my boy, but yeah... Uh, I am I am not letting you make the major league roster. That is a non-starter. No, Grunt and Court isn't that good. He can go to the minors. Andy Diaz is very much a gimmick, so he's going to the minors. How long is Mike Sorrentino out? He's out for two days, so I'm not worried about that. Herman Herrera, you're not terrible, but you're not great either, so you can go to the minors. Hines to the minors. Wells. Oh, no, Wells is my lefty. Do I have another lefty on the roster? It's literally only Wells. Oh, or it's Hops. Yeah, Hops would definitely be my opening, my, my lefty reliever. So we will send him to the proverbial dustbin of the minor leagues. Okay. So your question now becomes, all right, Avi, then who is your fifth starter? It's probably going to be Corey McLaughlin. And then Day converts back to being a reliever once, um, then you go to back, probably back to the minor leagues, but yeah, you're going to be, you're going to break camp as our fifth starter, which is not unexpected. I kind of was thinking that might happen, but, oh, we're 12 pitchers now. I definitely want a 13th pitcher. Uh, how about good friend... No, Virgil Hill was really bad last season. Oh, he hasn't actually pitched in the majors in, like, a decade. I'm, I'm exaggerating a bit, but... No, Virgil Hill seems like he could be a worthwhile uh, pitcher to have, so we will bring him up to the bigs. Let's set the pitching staff, shall we? So, five-man rotation... Who's our ace? I mean, I guess it's Jose Brown. Then Jesus Moya. No, no, no. I don't want potential. I want actual ability, like, right this second. There you go. Still the right choice, I think. Then Nieves. Then Day. 
And then McLaughlin. And Jose Brown will be the ace for now. Uh, the rest of the roster, Mr. Hops, you're going to be our lefty specialist. Um, our closer shall be Jim Gender. He can be 8th plus, so I don't mind stretching him out a little bit. He's got some decent stamina. Um, Jared Gilbert, I definitely want to be a middle reliever. Here, just give me relievers for right now, please. I guess Gilbert could do setup. At least for now. Um, then basically a bunch of middle relievers. I'm willing to just let the, the AI play the hot hand and determine who the best choice is for any given situation. Um, did anyone have... Oh, Mike Turhar had a great year last year. You know what? He even served as our closer when we needed him the most. I think he deserves a setup role as well. And Gilbert will be our sixth inning setup guy. At some point, you've got to weight performance a bit more heavily than raw talent. Uh, and Mr. Turhar, I think, has earned our trust as somebody we can rely upon a bit more. Caleb Bautista, you're here to be an emergency starter and rack up some innings when we need you to. And be our cheerleader. Okay. 23 position players, counting Gilbert, so really not that many. So, catcher. Benayun and Herrera both basically have identical offensive packages now. Benayun is from Pennsylvania. Herrera is the better defender? Hmm. I'm going to start Benny Yoon for one very specific reason. This. It's the fact that Chris Taylor has the same issue as Herrera. Plus, Benny Yoon is a little bit older. And so I think Benny Yoon is going to be our opening day backup catcher. Uh, Nargiso to the Miners. Uh, I meant Narciso, not Pozo. Sorry, Pozo. Don't get mad at me, please. Uh, Brandon to the minors. Wasson's going to stay in the big leagues, I think. I think Wasson is going to be my middle my middle infielder extraordinaire. Um, so I'm going to wave Brad Cullum so I can get him through his option year. Jonathan Webb, I still want to give him one more chance to improve his offense in AAA before I consider keeping him. Still got to get rid of four more players, though. Nate Sanders, no. Just no. Otis Wolf had a full season in the minors. I'm not sure what much, what he has left to prove. And I don't need like eight outfielders. That's a bit silly. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight outfielders, quite literally. Montez Dioka, you go to the minors. Easy choice. Um, hmm. 
I'm going to trade Luis Gonzalez. Um, he's the other obvious odd man out here, and then I can have a good hard think about what I want to do with my 27 spot. Jalen Tucker is my kind of player, elite power potential with enough contact to make that power meaningful. Um, I'm kind of here for that, but I'm looking to see if there's anybody else that is has an exceptionally bright future. Can I get a prospect package actually, get more bites of the apple? I think that would be smart if we can manage it. No, there's there's nothing here that really makes me interested. Oh, Haston Freeman Jr. Nope. You're an incredible infielder, but no. I've got to stop falling for a defense first people. Jose Gonzalez is pretty decent, but the problem is, is that Christensen and Haig don't really offer much. Um, let me go back to the single player, and let's just focus on outfielders, just so I can find the one guy I was looking at earlier, and then see if we can just get that team to add another prospect in. There you go, Jalen Tucker. And now let's check out your prospect list. Because I definitely want at least one more prospect if I'm going to give up Luis Gonzalez. Fortunately, it's the White Sox. So first things first, we don't have to worry about them until maybe interleague play, but probably during the rest of the season. Can I get Carl Verrocchio? You're just going to tell me no, aren't you? Understandable. Verrocchio seems pretty special, so I get why you wouldn't want to trade him. Yeah, no. I'm not giving up that. So let's move our list down a bit and let's see who else might be available. I quite like Chris Hawk. I uh, wonder if they'd throw in Chris Hawk. I will add in Danny Avalos to make this deal work. Just because I'm not that enamored of a pitcher that has that bad at movement. I'd like to try to add another player if we can though. Anthony Jones is defense only. I feel like that's a pretty easy thing to find. How about Mike Pruitt? No, I'm not getting another player just to get Mike Pruitt. I'm not that enamored by him. You won't give me Ozzy Strange. That makes sense. Frank Nunez? How about Ernesto Garza? Surely you won't begrudge me Ernesto Garza. No. Wow, really? Damn, son. How about Cesar Laguna? I don't have to have him, but he looks like basically Josh Lynch, but younger.
can have Tony Takeno. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and make this trade. I'm getting what I want, which is I'm getting three interesting prospects. I'm not giving up much except for Gonzalez. And let me be clear. I think Luis Gonzalez is a starting caliber outfielder. Um, that's why I drafted him when I did. And I do think we're going to regret this at least a little bit in the, in the medium term. But at the end of the day... He's just miscast on this team. And I I know for a fact, if I wave him, someone will claim him. So I'm going to pull the trigger, and I'm not going to hesitate. I'm going to be happy with that. Um, happy might be a bit of an exaggeration, but I am reasonably pleased with that. Okay. So now we get back to the painful, painful decision. So... Our starting outfielders are going to be Lynch, Grattan, and Joe. I'm going to turn you into a DH just so I don't try to flag you as an outfielder in my brain. There we go. You're a DH. So, Hughes is an incredible offensive player. And he's going to be our opening day. And, and he just plays really well. But so is Otis Wolf. And that is what this comes down to. Is would I rather have a more well-rounded skill set in Wolf? Or would I rather have a contact gap power machine in Hughes? And those are very different offensive skill sets. The benefit of Wolf, of course, is that I trust him to be a backup if Garay gets hurt. I'm not trading Wolf. Let me quickly make that apparent. I'm not trading Wolf. The question is, does he break camp with a big league club? Hmm, hmm, hmm. So I've got Wasson covering the infield positions when people need a break. Also, I thought this side of the fact that Jared Gilbert was a pretty talented hitter. Um, so he offers us another, uh, another offensive bat there. Um, hmm, hmm, Watson can play center. So what if I sent Sloan to the minors and Watson covers center in the middle infield? That let me keep Wolf on the roster as a backup for his baseman and backup DH. Or would Wolf get more from playing every day in the minor leagues? Well, I guess first let's see if Sloan would accept the demotion. He probably won't. He will not. Um. Getting rid of a pitcher seems so, seems short sighted, right? Like, it'd probably be Greg Weld, who didn't have a great season anyway. Am I crazy for thinking 12 pitchers? No, I'm overthinking this. Okay.
Wolf is the best on base guy on the roster. And only Lynch comes close. I want them both. That's what this comes down to. I want them both. I want Hughes because he's the perfect partner for Cerulli. And I want Wolf because he doesn't have anything left to prove in the minors. I'm going to go with my gut. I'm going to send Well down to the minors. That's where we are right now. I am going to give Actually, I guess I could send down Hill instead. Yeah, we'll send down Hill instead of Well. That makes it a little bit more palatable. Yes, I think I'm okay with this. I don't feel amazing about it, but I think it's the right call. I think... Yes, I'm doing it. Final answer. Oh, this one. This one feels wrong. It feels wrong. But I don't see that I have another obvious option either, though. Uh, okay. Yes. No hesitation. That seems like a really solid move to me. All right. So, not a whole... Oh, I didn't redo the lineup. That was definitely something I wanted to do. Uh, nuke it all from the moon, please. So. Our very best hitter is Bill Garrett. I'm not going to overthink it. Bill Garrett bats third. Johnny Cerulli is almost as good. I think he bats clean up. Pozo just has to bat second, though. I think he's too valuable hitting from the second spot. And Josh Lynch is definitely going to be our leadoff guy. So who bats fifth? Oh, we have Rory Gratton. No, he's got decent power. I actually like him batting fifth. Okay, so that's where Rory Gratton's going to hit. Sixth is going to be Mr. Brickhouse, I think. No, it's not. It's going to be Joe. What the fuck? Yeah, 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 yeah. Joe bats, uh, bats sixth. Gratton bats. Oh, dear. We're going to have pissed off people, aren't we? I will bet Joe clean up just because he's got the track record. He's hit, you know, over 100 home runs in three seasons. Um, Grant's going to bitch and moan, though. I, I don't really have another option for that, though, sadly. Um, unless I, like, Grant and bat leadoff and then send Josh Lynch lower in the lineup. 
The thing is, his number one asset is his ability to get on base. So I kind of feel like it's not too terribly bright to let Lynch uh, bat anywhere but lead off. Uh, then Daly, then Taylor batting last. This is an incredibly formidable lineup. I guess I really wanted to make Grattan happy at bat Cerulli, um sixth, but they're really kind of the same player. So I think we're good with that. Uh, next up, Mr. Kevin Benayoun. You will be starting once a week. I know Taylor is our, is our starting catcher. He's had a very solid career. But he's also 32. And giving him regular rest, I think, will make him a better player. I truly believe that. Once a week is once every seven games. I'm not going to divide 162 by 7, but 170 by 7 would not help either. Um, give me just a moment. Twenty is one hundred and forty. Seven times twenty-five is a hundred and fifty-five, right? No, it isn't. It is. Um, <laughs> You know what? I can't think. But basically, it's going to be starting 20 to 25 games, 30 at the outside. And I think that makes sense. I'm good with that. I want to get this youngster some reps. And I think he'll be a good choice. Next up, we have backing us up in the corners. Uh, first of all, Watson backs up at all three middle infield positions. Randy Sloan backs us up in center. The question is, does Hughes or Gilbert back us up in the corners? Probably Hughes, but also probably Gilbert. Like it's probably gonna look like Hughes, Hughes, and then Gilbert, Gilbert. Otis Wolf backs up at first base in DH. And Mr. Wolf, I'm going to let you start because uh, you would definitely want to keep Mr. Gray pretty fresh once every 10 days. Then it basically gives you 16 starts plus however many pinch hit and backup appearances you get. I think that makes sense. It'll keep Gray nice and healthy. Uh, that's going to be great. Primary pinch hitter is going to be Mr. Jim Hughes. Then Monsieur Otis Wolf. Then Randy Sloan. And no, Gilbert then Sloan. Sloan is my number four pinch hitter. In terms of raw speed, Sloan is our fastest dude that doesn't have a regular gig. So it'll be Sloan and then Wasson as uh in these roles and then was oops sorry uh wasson is there sloan wasson and then most importantly a uh, wasson also is our secondary backup at center field okay that seems like a pretty solid starting roster to me. Rory Gratton's going to get a bug up his ass, but I'm sure he'll I'm sure he'll sort it out. Um, now we're going to copy paste. And so the question is, where in the lineup would I want Hughes to bat? I think letting Grattan bat fifth for the sake of happiness would be very, very smart. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to have Hughes start at DH. Gilbert swaps with Hughes so that Gilbert is now the primary backup corner guy. Wolf is still Hughes' backup. Wolf still backs up at first. He's looking to do every 15 games, though, because he's... No, every 10, just period, just makes a lot of sense. Um... How bad is Cerulli against left? Uh, he is significantly worse against left handed pitching. He's better than Sloan, so I'll still give him this slot. But yeah. Um, oh, and then Cerulli will be the secondary backup in the corners over Hughes, because Hughes is going to be busy DHing. I think this gets us the most out of our lineup. Um, I truly believe that. Um, and I think we're going to have a really scary one. Especially if Cerulli does hit that extra gear that we that we all know he has. He's a contact hitter that didn't hit for contact. Um, what was his BABIP? It was really bad. Um, and let's further... He got wrecked by left-handed pitching. He was he got he wasn't his best against righties either, but left-handed pitching wrecked him. So just getting him out of the field against lefties makes us a better team, I think. Um So yeah, starting lineup is both very old and new, and that our two biggest additions are former pirates, Josh Lynch and Jeremy Brickhouse. Um Sean Hill isn't even an A ball yet. No, if we're ever to see something special from Josh Hill, we gotta test him. Sean Hill, we gotta test him. Uh, you were going to low A, my dude. I wanna get you in a full season league so we can see what you can do. Um. Hmm. Ricky Henderson, if you're 20 years old and still can't... No, I am taking over you as well. And I'm going to promote you to A-ball as well. I'm really curious to see how you develop. If you develop at all, boy, you could be something incredible. Like a Chris Taylor, that super duper, uh, super utility guy that plays every position pretty well. I have very high hopes for you, potentially. And then David Phil Lorette, I'm willing to let you continue to develop in, uh, in the international complex. Although, let's be realistic. Unless you start improving drastically with your defense, you're going to end up being uh, either an outfielder or a first baseman. Which is fine. Which is absolutely fine. Our rotation is quite different, but it's only different for right now. Specifically, we're hoping to see Tommy McDonald and David Alcantara return with some level of their former talent. And I think that's a very realistic and reasonable hope. I truly believe that is not... I believe that is not an unfair assumption here. We do have a couple of interesting decisions to make after this season, though. Which is, what do we do with Moya and what do we do with Nieves? Both have been very productive starting pitchers for us. And I feel like 20 million a year for Moya is kind of too expensive uh my dude that's all you want is there any reason for me not to give that to you 
you give me three consecutive seasons of high level play and you're only asking for a three year deal which is going to basically take you through your prime years uh four years sorry yes please done that's a very easy conversation for me to have A very easy conversation indeed. All right, my friends. Um, big decision next year. Actually, probably a non-decision, but which is whether we execute Pozo's option, which I think is a pretty obvious yes. Um, do we bring back Taylor at 18 million or is that too much money? Hmm. An intriguing question, a very intriguing question. Especially if our pal Ben Ayun has himself a pretty solid season. Like, if Ben Ayun can improve his offense even by a little bit, I don't see much utility in keeping Chris Taylor. I don't. Um... So that's going to be a very interesting decision. We're going to want to keep our, our eyes on uh, to see what happens there. Uh, Jonathan Webb, this is going to be a make or break year for you in AAA. Uh, if you can turn in another 2050 instead of a 2050 for AAA, I think you've got a real chance to win second base out of spring training next season. Because I don't think I'm going to keep Brickhouse. Uh, I don't think I'm going to keep him beyond the season. But we'll see. We will see. Okay. So, my friends, I hope you have been enjoying the series thus far. Um, I still feel conflicted about my decision about letting Wolf plan the Major League roster at the expense of another reliever. We're going to see what happens. Why we're not starting Jose Brown on opening day? Oh, because he's tired. That's fine. Yeah, Moya's going to be the big question, right? That's going to be the biggest question. Remember, $8 million per war suggests that a value of $24 million would be reasonably worthwhile. I'm not saying he wouldn't deserve it. I'm saying, can we pay it? Without, say, voiding the contract of Chris Taylor or somebody else. Um, that is a very, very good question. Nieves is a coup at $6 million. I'm very happy to pay Nieves $6 million to be our starter for the next few seasons. Very happy about that. No issues there. Do we try to bring back Josh Lynch? I guess we'll see how he does. Um, but my friends, that's going to be it for today's episode. I hope you have enjoyed. If you have, please remember to leave a like. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, consider doing so so you don't miss a single episode of either OTP series. Uh, comments are always appreciated. Uh, even if I don't agree with what you're saying, I still enjoy interacting with you all. Um, so do feel free to share your thoughts. Maybe you think I'm insane for running it back with so many... Uh, if you think I'm crazy, I have 14 hitters on this roster. I don't think I am. 
I don't think I am. But maybe someone will tell me something and I'll change my mind before next episode. Who knows? Until next time, however, this has been Guardian. Thank you for watching, and I bid you good day.